that was the uh, the one in Facebook. Uh, you know, uh, every fourth Sunday, the pastor gives me the opportunity to stand before you, and uh, I, I, I don't know. I, I told him he creates a lot of stress in my life. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have to try to read a lot of scriptures? I remember a lot of things and try to keep it in your mind. It kind of uh, keeps you up at night. So I'm not gonna say that. I'm, I'm just thankful that, that he thanks that much of me to give me that opportunity. I uh, I wanted to mention something and everything. And uh, Facebook, if you're listening and everything, I, I, I tell him I'm going to mention this and everything. You know, but uh, we're in need of a building and everything, and we seem to be outgrowing this building, outpacing the. Uh, growth in the neighborhood, and we want to ask that if anybody out there has any land or a church building that they're interested in getting rid of and everything, please notify us and, and let us know and everything. And, uh, and, and we're not uh, ashamed of uh, accepting a contribution or two in there. <laughs> some of money, <laughs> you know, they want to contribute. So uh, I told them I was going to mention that and everything, and, and the reason I did is that uh, when I breakfast with, uh, with his friend, RV, <laughs> And I think that's an unusual name on me, but uh, yeah, recreation vehicle. But anyway, uh, uh, he, he had told us that we might want to mention that and that uh, that was the way he got funding for a lot of the things that he's doing. But uh, I, I, I have to say this. I was impressed with, uh, with what he had done and, and the way he was doing it, the people he had met, because he's uh, uh, involved with a lot of the athletes. He had been involved with a lot of the ath local athletes. Then he went on and he was involved with some of the college teams and some of the professional teams. So he's been working real hard and everything. And I, and, and I sat there the whole time and I didn't realize that him and Brother Gia was uh, uh, cohorts, so to, speak, co co so to speak, and everything. And, and what I mean by that and everything is that they came up under the same pastors, under the same uh, uh, church and everything. And, 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 and so they kind of had an idea of what each other was capable of. And, and, and I, I'm going to say it like this and everything, you know, I, I've never heard anybody speak so highly of, uh, of a person as I did him speaking of Brother Jeter. And I said, well, you know, he's just reaffirming all the things that I've already said about him and everything, you know. Uh, we've got one of the most hardest working pastors in the, in the area and everything. And, and I said, with a guy with this kind of knowledge and this kind of ability, uh, I don't see why he don't have a big church and everything, you know. I, 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 and, and, and I'm, I'm going to say this because that's uh, you know, sometimes, you know, we kind of get in a location and we think we've called to that location to that particular area and everything. Sometimes the Lord is just calling you to a bigger work and everything, you know, so uh, you, might, you might be kind of watchful of, of what happens and everything. You know, like I said, uh, uh, he's a good pastor. He knows what he's doing. He knows what he's saying. And uh, I don't have any, any, any qualms with the qualifications that he's had and everything. I've Worked on him for several years now, and everything, you know. So, uh, I, I'm, I'm gonna get good one day. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna get good because I, I listened to him and I watched. And, uh, you know, sometimes, you know, like, like I said, if you uh, are not well versed in something, you know, the best thing to do is kind of read and study up. And I had an article that I found in Billy Brown's column in the paper, and, and I wanted to read it to you. And this goes to you too, Facebook. And it says, when I got saved, I thought my big problem would go away. But nothing has changed. It makes me wonder if I really got saved. Mm -hmm. Now, I, 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 I can read you his answer and the way he answered and everything, you know. But I, I want to say it to you like this and everything, you know. Being a Christian and living a Christian life isn't an easy job. Sometimes we take it for granted, you know, because we went to the to the thing that all the happiness and joy is going to show up in our life. It don't always happen like that and everything. And like I said, now I tell you that on many occasions, you know, when you go down in that water of baptism and you come up, the devil comes up right beside you and everything. You know? <laughs> so, sometimes you come and ah, I got you there. You know? so, so we have to think about, about that, you know, in our lives and everything, you know. And, and so I, 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 I kind of use myself as an example a lot of times, and, 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 and y'all may not agree with that. You know, I, uh, uh, RV had said that he had been in 48 states. Well, I don't know if I've been in 48 of them, but I, I've been real close. <laughs> and, and some of them were just a blur. I, uh, I was stationed out in Tacoma, Washington, and uh, I had a, a money call. I probably 
I told you I was stirring and everything. And, uh, and anyway, I traded the money called in because it, it was a real gas guzzler and everything. And I traded in right before I left. And I bought an Oldsmobile 442. And it was a smaller engine and a smaller carburetor. So, you know, it was pretty reasonable on gas at that particular time. And I drove it all the way across the country. And I drove from Tacoma, Washington to Chattanooga, Tennessee in two and a half days. I don't, I don't remember much of what I saw, <laughs> but, but I know I had to see some stuff. But, but I, I want to say this and everything. I was coming down Interstate 70, and you could see a pretty good distance. And so, you know, I just floor it and everything. And when I get up to that point where I was seeing from way back there, then you could see that much further. And I said, it kind of it kind of reminded me of the desert. You know, like when I was in Saudi Arabia and everything, you know, uh, when you ride across the desert, you know, you don't see nothing but sand and, and mm -hmm. land. And when you get up to the end of that land, you don't see nothing but more sand and more land. And I, I wondered, you know, how, how they crossed that and everything. But anyway, to make a long story short, I, 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 uh, I was driving about 120 miles an hour, uh, most of the way. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm guilty. <laughs> uh, going into Kansas City and, Can and Kansas and everything, I was going to stop in in, uh, in Colorado at Fish Simmons Army Medical Center, but uh, I'm trying to think. I don't want something happen on the road and everything. And I said, "No." I said, "This get kind of cold and everything." I'm going because I don't want to get caught out here in the snow, so I'm going to keep on going. So I was just flying. I was booking down the road, and the only thing I was stopping for was gas and Jack in the Box. I, Kentucky Fried Chicken wasn't as popular in, in, in McDonald's. I didn't like McDonald's, so I would look for a Jack in the Box. And anytime I saw one of them, I'd pull over and get me a hamburger. So the last time I got in Cape Girardeau, uh, St. Louis, and I stopped at, at uh, the Colonel, the Colonel, and I only got chicken and biscuits. And I was coming from, from there. I said, Well, I got to stop one more time. So I got on the other side of Jackson, Tennessee, and I stopped. And I said, This is the last time. But I was so stiff and so sore, I couldn't move. I, I couldn't even hardly pump the gas in my car. That's how I saw it. So when, it, when I got up, I got back in the car, got up under the wheel, my fingers, when I got to Chattanooga, my fingers had done locked in on the steering wheel, and I couldn't get them loose. Mm. So my mother had to come out and pry my fingers loose. <laughs> <laughs> and help me out. And it took me a couple of days to really get back right and everything. But I'm, I'm saying that for a purpose. And I said, well, he tells us a lot of stories about himself and everything. You know, uh, that same car that I had and everything, I had, and, and I, this sermon was going to be on Paul's three uh, thorns in the side. Because I lost that car and I lost my brother in 81. He was killed in a car wreck at Fort Benning, Georgia in that same car. And then in 84, I lost my wife. And, and I, I have to tell you this third thing. You know, we was uh, in the hospital. They called me about, I guess, about 11 30, 12 o'clock at night and everything. And they told me that I need to get over there as quick as I could. I said, Well, I got to wake the kids up and get them back dressed and everything, you know. And they said, Well, you need to get here. So they didn't want to tell me what had happened. So anyway, so I got them up, told Joseph to get up and get their clothes on and everything. And I left a little girl out there, kept on her pajamas. So we just loaded up in the car and came over to the hospital. And we went into the room, you know, went up to the fourth floor and everything, went into the room. And, and my wife was just laying there in the bed, it looked like she was asleep. So I said, well, you know, we had just left that, that night. So I went in and I started shaking her. She wouldn't never move, wouldn't never wake up or nothing like that. So my son came down, he started shaking her, and shaking her real brisk and real hard. And she still never woke up. And I said, well, I said, I guess it's true, she's really dead. And, 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 and the thought was coming in my mind, my son, he just brushed in tears and took out running down the hallway. And, you know, he was a pretty fast kid back at that time. He was 12 years old. He was running. And I had my daughter. I couldn't run and catch him. So the nurse said, give me, your, give me your daughter. So she took my daughter. And I went on down there, and I finally did catch him. And uh, I, 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 you know, I tried to console him and just uh, tell him it was going to be okay. So the chaplain, one like you, the hospital chaplain, came and tried to get us, usher us down into the chapel downstairs in the first floor. And I said, no, I said, I just want to get my kids home and make some phone calls and let, let everybody know what's happening and everything, you know. He said, no, come on, let us pray with you, let us talk. I said, I need to go home and everything, you know. And uh, I took them and went on home to the house and everything. And uh, I called her. And I'm saying my in-laws was there within four hours. They came from uh, Oklahoma, on the outside of Oklahoma, Alabama, to Augusta, Georgia, and they were there within four hours or anything. But anyway, to make a long story short and everything, 
those were my thorns in my side, you know, because uh, I, I, I went through some trouble. I didn't know what to do. I, I, I really was, was concerned about my kids and everything, you know, because uh, I said, now they're going to grow up without a mother. They don't have anything, you know. So uh, when I look at that article in the paper, and I think about it, I said, uh, when I got saved, I thought my problems would go away, but nothing has changed. Well, when I, I, I wasn't saved this time, but when I first got saved and everything, I think I was kind of in that same predicament and everything, you know. It seemed like everything kept happening to me, you know, like, uh, you know, we was going broke, <laughs> didn't have any money, and, and a lot of other things that uh, I couldn't account for. And so I told my son, I said, I said, uh, you know, we can kind of break up as a family and I can let y'all go to with my grandmother, my mother, or either your, your grandmother if you want to and everything, you know. And they, we sat down, he said, no, I said, I'm going to stay here with you, so we're going to stay here, and we're going to stay together. And I, when he said that, they sat and I said, well, that's what we're going to do and everything, you know. And um, it's been a thorn in my side ever since. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, I, I, I kind of wanted to share that with y'all and everything because uh like I said, so many other things have happened, and, and, and I'm sure they haven't just happened to me and everything, you know. But when you uh, when you make a commitment to God and everything, you need to make a commitment to God and everything. And, and it ain't so much that everything is going to change. I, I I heard my brother say that, uh, you know, hey, when is the Holy Spirit going to take I said, I said, that's your conscience. It ain't necessarily the Holy Spirit. It's your conscience that, that's going to gonna take over and everything. And then it's going to tell you, you know, if you just go back and check with your heart and everything, what's right and what's wrong and everything. And, and so many people think that uh, the Holy Ghost is going to tell them what to do. Well, that ain't the way it is and everything. You know, like I said, it's going to be your country because God gives you free will to be able to do and uh, accept him if you will or accept him not and everything. And, 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 and the point I'm making with that and everything is when you uh, accept Christ and you put him on with your whole heart, and let him absorb into your mind and everything, I promise you, you're going to see a difference, and, and you will make the right decisions and everything, you know. Sometimes we uh, haphazardly accept the Lord and everything, and, and what it is, is we want to continue to do the things we were doing before, even after, and that ain't, that ain't, that ain't, that ain't Christian, that ain't being a good Christian and everything, you know, so, uh, so we need to Start shedding things off. I, I, I think about in the military, you know, they go through basic training when they put you on your rucksack and everything, and you have to go into this Constantine wire and under all this other wire, and uh, you start losing all your valuables and all your stuff start falling out and everything. Well, he's just narrowing you down so that you can go through that small, narrow gate. <laughs> I, uh, it, it's hard, and I, I don't want to say this, it's hard being a Christian. But if you stay obedient and follow what God has told you to do up until the end, I promise you, you will find success in everything that you do. And I'm going to say, you know, I uh, came to the Lord kind of late in life. I, I uh, was 50. That's been over 18 years ago now, and everything, you know, but I'm still holding on. Amen. And everything and every turn that I've made. I feel like he's made it with me. Amen. <clears throat> the title of my sermon for today, He Made a Believer Out of Me. Amen. Amen. And, uh, I'm, I'm going to give you the script we're going to read from Philippians verses, uh, chapter 1, verses 3 through 6. Because uh, we, we, we've kind of got a, a an abbreviated service on today because we're going to have a communion today and everything else. So I, I, uh, and we, we do that every, uh, what is it, every quarter, every fourth, fourth week. So, uh, so we will be doing that today and everything, you know, but, uh, but uh, let me read the scripture and then we'll pray. <clears throat> Paul and Timotheus, the servants of Jesus, wait a minute, I'm, I'm going back too far, I'm throughout from the beginning, but let me just go down to verse 3. I thank my God upon every remembrance of you, always in every prayer of mine for you, I will make you request with joy for your fellowship in the gospel from the first day until now, being confident of this very thing, that he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. And what he's saying there, that, you know, like, you know, we, we thank that Jesus is better, but he loves us so good and so much. 
It's so hard that no matter where we go and what we do, no matter if we're going down or we're coming up, he's the one lifting me up right now. Uh, so let us pray. Once again, Heavenly Father, we just come thank you for this day. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you for the members that are present. And we just ask that you forgive me any of my trespasses. I forgive those that have trespassed against me, Father. And we uh, <clears throat> we will give you all honor and glory. We ask that you make me your eyes and ears this day. And we thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Uh, I, uh, there was something I wanted to talk about. It says, our, our, our God isn't looking for her. For necessarily good men or good women and everything. That was the army's motto and everything. God is looking for men and women who will worship him in spirit and in truth. And like I said, sometimes we uh, we get that mixed up and everything, you know, because we think we can continue to do the things that we've been doing all this time and everything. Hey, uh, I'm, I'm going to tell you one more little story. I ain't trying to take up my time, but I'm going to tell you one more little story and everything. When we was going to Fort Benning back in, in the day and everything, and that was my brother-in-law, and that was his son that just recently passed, and then Chris, that was his son. And uh, he was here, and he kept bragging and talking about what a great time we used to have with him. And I said, I said, you forget some things, man. He said, uh, he said, no, so what am I forgetting? And I said, we were driving down to Warm Springs, Georgia, and uh, he had fell asleep. He was driving, it was his time to drive, and he was driving, and he had fell asleep. And when I looked up and looked over and saw that he was asleep, it was an 18 wheeler coming out and it was flashing its lights. And I said, oh my God. So I didn't want to get up and alarm him, you know, so he'll start trying to fight that with the wheel. So I grabbed the wheel and tried to ease it over into the other lane to the truck path. And then I eased it back over and I, and I, took, I said, buddy, you were asleep, man. I said, look at you. I said, we, we could be dead right now. So anyway, we came up to a gas station and we pulled in and everything. And I told him, get out of the wheel. And you ain't never driving through me, no. <laughs> <laughs> I was so scared, and I said, and, and so the point I made, I was asking, I said, was that fun? I said, I said, you don't even remember what happened. I said, I said, was that fun? He said, no, nah, I just remember you taking me out under the wheel. <laughs> and that's all he remembered about the whole incident and everything. I said, we did have some times and everything, but, uh, but that wasn't no fun. But the guy, the, 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 the guy that we serve is a mighty good guy and everything, and he could have taken us away in any, in any, any one of those times and one of those incidents and everything, Amen. but he allowed me to live and everything. And I, I'm, I'm going to say, he has a purpose for each and every one of my lives. Yes. I, uh, I wouldn't have got to this point. And I wouldn't have got here and everything, you know. Sometimes, you know, and I, I know y'all probably go through the same thing. I wonder, how did I get to this point? And how, how are we in this little group? Or why, why are we here, you know, uh, uh, with just a little small group and everything? Because you got big ideas in your mind and everything, you know. And, and, I, and I'm kind of like that, too, and everything. You know? But uh, uh, I just wanted to share it. <clears throat> Our God is a is a, is a good guy. He uh, irregardless of what you do and everything, and he he wants he wants you for eternal life. I I, I, I was reading, like I said, in all the, the scripture I was reading, and I came across John fourteen, and it says, uh, "I go and prepare a place for you, and if I prepare a place, I will come and receive you into myself and everything." So that where I am, there you will be also and everything. And, 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 and I, I, I think about that and everything, you know, I say, well, you know, if he's been, what are the God that we know that gives a place for us? What other God has prepared a place for us? What other God walks with us whenever we, I, I, I look at the Muslims, I look at the Jehovah's Witness and everything, and uh, after they leave church, they don't talk about their guys no more. <laughs> yeah. And that kind of I, I, I was watching the little show on TV, the uh, the helicopter that they put up in space, and, and as it was taking pictures, and, and you mm -hmm. kept rotating around and everything, and you could kind of see the universe and how expansive it was and everything. And I'm saying, now, what great bang could have created that? Amen. What 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 bang could create the veins and the arteries in my body that create all these circulatory systems? The, the nervous system and everything. What 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 mind would have created that? I said, because if we was having a mind, would we continue to have the same mind that would make my body better? Instead of me running off of all of this blood and everything, I'd be running off of battery for that. <laughs> 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 and, and, and I want you to think about that and everything, you know. He he has provided everything. 
And, and, and so that way, I, that, that's why I put all my faith and all my trust in Jesus Christ. Because Amen. I can say that Amen. He, Amen. he's the only one that we can trust. I, I, I say people come to church for all different reasons. They, uh, it, it was talking and he was talking, uh, RV was talking about how he had a service and he had so many people came down front that it wasn't even room for him and everything, mm. you know. And I said, well, one day we're going to have that. We're going to have a church. When they come down here, you know, I'm, I'm, hey, I'm, 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 I'm going to have to come in. Oh, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking ahead of myself and everything, you know, but, uh, but it is and everything. Uh, <clears throat> let me see what it is. Oh, yeah, I wanted to mention about the young people and everything. And, 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 and that's the first thing they'll say and everything, you know, is uh, that God never did nothing for them and everything, you know. And I said, well, how can they be saying that? I said, well, whatever God did, do it. Do, do something for you. I said, uh, I said, go and ask Jehovah God to do something for you, you know. Go ask uh, uh, the Catholic priest to do something for you and everything, you know. Uh, I, I, I don't understand how he got to have the power. He's supposed to be second to God, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I'm going to quit, I'm going to quit, I'm going to quit. I'm going to leave that alone. But, uh, uh, oh, oh, yeah. And, and just like this article was saying, and thing, like I said, when you go through so many mishaps and things in your life and everything, you wonder where God is and everything and where, where is that. Well, God is, uh, he's not on vacation or nothing and everything, you know. If you, if you, if you ever tried to pray and, uh, and, and, and you feel like the prayer didn't get through and everything, you know, sometimes when you look back and you think back and everything, you know, you, you really can't see. You say, well, you know, I asked I asked him for this. And, and a lot of times, I'm going to tell you, we all ask for something selfish or something personal and everything, you know. But, uh, you know, if you uh, just express your love for him, and I, I promise you, the things that you ask for will be given to you and everything, you know. And it says that in the scriptures and everything, you know. But we are, <clears throat> we need to quit. Expecting things like uh, that God is going to come back to us right away and everything, you know. <clears throat> I uh, I took a, a little trip a couple of weeks ago and everything. I went up into the mountains and everything, and I was telling my son about it and everything. He said, we need to go do that same thing. And uh, I was looking for a place to fish. And, and, and that was really what was driving my whole trip. But anyway, I uh, went up into the gorges, and I didn't realize that that many people and that many cities existed up on top of that mountain and everything. Mm -hmm. And he called some 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 city Nan Nanja or some some stuff with N A N and everything. And I said, I remember seeing that and everything. He said, Well, that's where you should have went. That's where it's a big old lake and everything. And I said, I couldn't find it. I, I said, I went in all those little gorges and everybody was so looking at me and everything. And I said, Well, I don't know if I'm supposed to be welcome up here or not and everything. I said, This is supposed to be blown into the Indians. But <laughs> look like. <laughs> It looks like it belonged to the Americans. But anyway, and I got up there. They got one of the biggest casinos that I've ever seen. It is it is humongous in Cherokee, North Carolina. I, I, I drove to within 21 miles of Asheville, North Carolina. And that casino was so big. And when I finally got in, I found out where all the blacks were. <laughs> <laughs> I guarantee you it was 60%. 60% black and maybe 40% oh, white. Wow. But, but it was a whole bunch of us in there. And for all the rooms and the hotel, the size of that hotel, I, and they were still up. I said, where, where are all these people coming from? You know, that was my thought. My thought pattern. And I said, well, Jesus must be watching out. He's taking care of a lot of people and everything, you know, for them to be able to come out here and recreate and do the things that they're doing here at this, uh, this uh, casino. But anyway, and I came back a back row, and it's a little train, a little train was going around the little city, but I came on a little village that was just teepees. I never seen that before. I, I, I said I wanted to take you up the sale and down. I said I had never seen that before and I had never seen so many RVs. I had never seen the likes of RVs side by side but side by side all the way around all the water. So if y'all ever get a chance, make that trip and everything. And the Lord will bless you. <laughs> uh, like one guy stopped me in, or he didn't stop me. I stopped at the little store right there by Subway and everybody, and he said, uh, so you know you're in God's country, huh? <laughs> <laughs> so I said, well, I I'm going to visit. But anyway, let me go let me go on with my message and everything, you know. Uh, <clears throat> okay. Oh. I, I, I was 
started this out and everything, uh, and I was going to talk about Paul and the thorns that he received in his side and everything, you know, when he asked the Lord to remove them, the Lord told him, you know, his grace was sufficient for him. Amen. Well, I'm, I'm going to extend that as a I think his grace is sufficient for each and every one of us. In Romans 3, 23, it tells us that uh, uh, our, everybody has sinned. It's all short of the glory of God. But uh, 6, 23 tells us that uh, wages of sin is death. death. And he's kept all of us alive for a reason and everything, you know. Amen. And, and uh, the next question they were asked is, uh, well, if our God is so good, why, why does he send so many people to hell? Hmm. And only a portion, you know, that he selected go to heaven. And well, that's not God's doing everything, you know. I told you, he gave us free will and he allowed us to make the decision on our own and everything, you know. And, and like I said, if your conscience hadn't bothered you and you hadn't felt that, that, that your conscience was guiding you and everything, you know, then uh, you're in the wrong business and everything. Because like I said, the Christmas life, the Christian life ain't no easy life to live and everything, you know. A lot of things that are very difficult and everything, you know, but he uh, he will bring you through them to increase your character and everything. And when you get on the other side and you start looking back at all the places and all the things that you've done, and like I said, I, 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 myself, I, I look at all the dangers and all the uh, waving all that I had to not be here. He so, so fit for me to be here and everything. Yeah. And I'm going to continue. I, I, I don't know about you. And I don't know the things that you've been through and everything, you know, but I know you have just do some things. So just uh, continue to hold in. And uh, Matthew 6 and 1 tells us, The matter of worship, such as giving, praying, and fasting, must grow out of the right motives. And, and, and I wanted to mention that and everything, you know. So sometimes we come and we use the wrong motive for what has motivated us to get here and everything in the first place. But uh, God is there with us and everything. And just listen, just listen and everything. I, 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 I said, I was going to tell you on all little saying it's going to be, don't get off the bus because uh, there's more to come. And I, 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 I did as I went through the scripture and everything, I wrote down so much more that I wanted to talk about. But uh, I, I said, I know the day is probably not the day for me to do that and everything, you know, but I, I, I got a couple more points that I want to mention. And then we'll close on that and everything. Uh, I was talking about the. Hell, people put, put people in hell and everything, okay? And uh, hell wasn't designed for people. Uh -huh. Hell was designed for Satan yes. and the angels, the fallen angels and everything. Amen. And, and what happened and everything, you know, uh, uh, just like he drove a third of the angels over to his side and everything, he's still drawing people to his side. And I, I was telling you, when you go down in the water of baptism and everything, when you get up and everything, you know, don't think that, uh, that Satan ain't going to have something to do with God. He don't want to see you. He want to thwart God's plan for your life and everything. You know? So he's going to do everything he can to try to throw you over to his side and everything. You know? But we need to be real lyric and everything. Uh, I heard one guy said, you know, well, it seems like he's sending more people to hell and he's sending to heaven and everything. Mm. I said, that's because you're choosing, you know. Uh, and, 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 and it seems like, you know, no matter how you talk and what you say and, and, and what all kind of testimony you use, it seems like they still come up with the same excuses and everything, you know. So I, I guess it's going to be a percentage of us that's always going to have those same excuses, want to do the same things that we've been doing. But uh, bring yourself up out of there. Get up out of, out of, the, out of the gutter and Amen. get on, on with Christ because uh, Christ is going to be the one that looks out for you and everything. I said it's two judgments and everything, you know. Um, the first judgment, uh, the tree of life. What, 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 what is the first judgment? Is that what you call the tree of life? Not mm -hmm. the tree of life, is it? Well, the first judgment is for your sin. Yeah. But that's when we uh, give our sins to the That's the judgment of sin. No, no, that's. Well, no, the first judgment, I'm talking about, okay, well, I, I did it and everything. Okay, but then the final judgment is going to be the white throne judgment and everything, you know, uh, the great white throne judgment and everything. And that's when uh, the non believers are going to be penalized for not committing their life to Christ and everything, you know. And you don't want to be in that one. You want to be in the first judgment. The judgment seat of Christ. Yeah, the judgment seat of Christ. That's what I'm saying. Right? But uh, you're going to receive, and like I said, uh, the, the I, I don't want to say it like it because some people are going to, going, to, going, to, going to take it the wrong way and everything, you know, but you're going to receive rewards for, for what you do in this life and everything. And if you didn't do anything, you know, uh, you weren't a, a good giver, you weren't a, a good member 
and uh, you didn't volunteer for anything, you know, you, you, you might not want to expect any rewards. You may make it to heaven. You may make it into heaven and everything, you know, but you might have to stand way back in the back while you watch me get my awards. You know? <laughs> I'm, I'm going to be like one of the big football players. Oh, 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 just be talking there for <laughs> But um, anyway, uh, it, it, there's so many other things that I've written here that I want to thank you. Oh, oh, James 3.1. I, I did want to mention anything because, uh, and, and, and I, I talked to my sister a lot about this and everything, you know, is that uh, the greatest challenge for any of us that any of us uh, face is, is controlling the tongue. Mm -hmm. yes. <laughs> we, we've got now where we, we can say anything. And, and, and yeah. I, I hear my little, my little great daughter, I, and I hate to say it, I, but I can use it as an example and everything. And, and she said, S H I T. I said, What did you say? Oh, oh, I wasn't supposed to say. I said, no, but I said, uh, I said, where do you hear that? And she said, I hear a lot of people say that. <laughs> <laughs> Be careful. Your kids are listening to you. And then we would repeat anything that they hear. Right. And, you know, so, uh, you know, and, 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 and I think now is the time we have to kind of carouse them and get them in and start trying to teach them uh, little lessons and everything. And, and, and I will say this to you and everything, you know, I see where everybody's writing. I see, uh, RV done old two books and everybody writes new. And we we be a great guy. We could write a good book about that right <laughs> <laughs> Come on out with our books. Can, can we make some money? You know, I'm, looking, I'm just talking and everything. You know, but uh, but anyway, I'm not I'm not going to hold us up much longer and everything because uh, uh, there's so many other things that that, that I have and everything. And, and I, I, I don't want to. Well, let me let me hey let me look at this page. <laughs> I wrote a whole lot of stuff on here. Oh, I, and I asked him for this one this morning and everything, you know, um, from Galatians 9, 6 and everything. And I, I won't give you, but it says, be weary of well-doing. Mm. And I, 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 I think we need to consider what we're doing for our brothers and our sisters and, and our co-workers and our cohorts here in the church and everything. You know, because like I said, we are... We can do a lot of things and do a lot of damage. And then, like I told you, James 3 1 was telling you about the tongue. Be careful what you say with your mouth and with your tongue and everything because uh, so many other things can happen. You know, all these things that have happened, I wouldn't have never believed that they would have happened to me. And, and, and I'm on the up, up, swaying down and everything, you know, but don't, don't, don't get it wrong and don't get it twisted because I know that it's as easy as I'm going up. Eventually, I'm going to start going back down and everything, you know, but, but he's brought me a mighty long way and everything, and just like he's probably brought each and every way, y'all a mighty long way, so uh, you, you ask yourself, where do we go from here and everything, you know, well, I don't know where you're going to go, but uh, I, I told you in the beginning, in the opening thing of my sermon was, he made a believer out of me, and the things that he's done, and what he's done in my life, and the distance he's brought me and everything, and so I'm going to continue to serve the Lord, just like Joshua. Me and my house, we're going to continue to serve the Lord. So mm -hmm. I uh, <clears throat> I want to want to thank y'all. And, and I never did give y'all my three points and everything. So I hate, <laughs> I, I hate when I do that. Now, right? <laughs> and then a lot of it, I forget what I was doing and where I was going to go. But, uh, but I do. I thank y'all for y'all's attention and for being here. And like I said, uh, the Pitt and the Pouch has taught me that no matter who's here, you know, if you only got like, two or three, Preach to the three. Amen. You got a house full, preach to a house full. Amen. Thank you. Amen.